Marley from the Energy Boutique with your energy forecast for Monday, October 21st. So we have the moon in Gemini energy for the majority of the waking day. We will see the moon go void, of course, at 5.01 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're locking into Cancer energy, the moon's rulership at 6.51 p.m. Again, Eastern Standard Time. The transition from Gemini energy to Cancer energy is always felt because we're moving out of the light, fluffy, airy intellect to the deep, intuitive, and emotional heart space of Cancer energy. We are essentially realizing in the Gemini energy where options and opportunities for change, for improvement, for adjustment, for transformation are definitely being revealed to us. And the minute that we move into Cancer energy, we kind of clam up. We kind of revert to holding on to what is tried, tested, true, what is familiar. We start really kind of talking ourselves out of wanting to grow, wanting to evolve, because we just want to kind of feel good in this present moment. And of course, change and transformation requires a lot of responsibility, a lot of accountability that we're just not emotionally prepared to do under the cancer influence. So we definitely bring up all the feels in that cancer energy. And because today is the last day of Libra season, we have the sun sitting at the final degrees of this Libra energy, which is always an intensity. It's a mastery point. We have to reflect over Libra season to see whether or not we actually learn the lessons, whether or not we actually achieve peace, harmony and balance, whether or not we actually achieve realizing who and what now needs to stay, needs to go. So there's a little bit of an undertone of intensity here, of urgency to hurry up, to choose, to decide coming at us. But of course, in Libra season, indecision reigns supreme. And with the moon shifting into cancer energy, we're going to decide to not make any changes as of this present moment. So there are 12 different aspects popping off here today. 10 of them are going to involve the moon. The moon in Gemini energy going to sextile beautiful interaction with Chiron, the wounded healer who is retrograde in Aries energy. We love air and fire because they come together and they combust and they give us a little bit of a shimmer, a little bit of a glimmer of hope, of creativity, of an aha moment of a solution. The moon in this Gemini energy, again, emotionally trying to sort out the options, the opportunities that we have to grow, to heal, to evolve. And because Chiron is very very much responsible for our egoic identity and the identity that we're currently shifting into as the higher self, we are very aware of where it is that there are still some issues alive and present that we need to tackle, that we need to do better on, that we need to make the adjustments in alignment with. We need to do better. We need to be better. We're bringing the higher self online. And this particular interaction is just showing us where it is that we have made some progress, especially with bringing this new version, this better version of self online. The moon is going to come up to bump into team up with conjunct Jupiter, the planet of growth, expansion, beliefs, abundance, and blessings, who currently is retrograde in this Gemini energy. So a conjunction is just as much of an ending as it is a beginning. And because Jupiter is kind of like the hype girl of the Zodiac, we do have the option, the opportunity to kind of see where it is that we're regaining our confidence. We're kind of moving into a more optimistic perspective and point of view on what it is that we've actually done as far as growth, as far as evolving, as far as healing has gone. Emotionally speaking, we are starting to put an end to the confusion, the delusion that we've very much been under since this eclipse season come to pass. And the beginning is that we're starting to see options and opportunities to move on, to move forward, to do better, to be better. We're starting to see them actually be revealed in our physical form. The moon is then going to make a positive interaction with Pluto, the great transformer, who, of course, is at the final degrees of this Capricorn energy. This is a major shift in our mood, in our attitude. We're feeling capable. We're feeling empowered to take control over our lives, especially where our emotions and our mental plane is concerned. 
because Pluto is kind of giving us a couple of weeks, the last opportunity, the last hurrah to kind of do a clean sweep of the existing aspects, foundations, structures, relationship dynamics in our physical realm. This is us kind of seeing the options, the opportunities to take particular power and control back and actually squash a lot of the, let's call it residual energies from the old version of self. The moon is then going to make a positive interaction with Mars, the god of war, ruling over our physical energy, our drive, our passion, our desire, even our anger, who, of course, is in cancer energy in preservation mode. The moon and Mars working together, kind of showing us where it is that we have to put the tunnel vision goggles on, where we have to get focused, where we have to get motivated, inspired, determined to see a particular chapter through, especially where, again, fighting protecting, defending what it is that we've already built and created, what it is that we've already arrived at in our emotional realm is concerned. Anything that we deem to be of worth and value, worth fighting for, is what we need to hone in on. Those are the aspects that we want to build upon. Well, we're easily able to let a lot of the aspects that we've oak grown go. The moon then going to make a positive interaction with Uranus, the great awakener, who of course is retrograde, in Taurus energy, showing us where it is that we're resisting the changes that we know that we need to make, where it is that we're holding on so tightly to what it is that we've already built and created that we're missing the opportunity for growth, for evolving, for healing, for change and transformation. The moon interacting with Uranus in this way, likely going to bring some light bulb moments, some aha moments, some epiphanies, especially where options and opportunities to switch things up, to do things different, to put certain aspects, people, places and things behind us. The moon is then going to make an awkward interaction with Mercury. Mercury, ruler of the mental plane, ruler of information, communication, how it is that we express ourselves. Mercury is in Scorpio energy, sorting through the details of some situations, some circumstances, some conversations that have already gone by. We are trying to plan and strategize how to move on and move forward, but we don't have a total understanding of how it is that we've even gotten here. The moon being our heart space, Mercury being our head space, they're not on the same page. The Gemini energy does kind of pique the curiosity in order for the Scorpio energy that Mercury's in to do a deep dive, to kind of dissect, pick apart, break down a lot of the situations, circumstances, thoughts, emotions, and memories of the past, helping us to put them in a different lens, a different perspective, so that again, we can kind of process them in a different way, move past them emotionally and mentally speaking. Mercury then goes on to make a positive interaction with the North Node in Aries energy. This is going to be an aha moment on where it is that we're coming up with a little bit of a glimmer, a little bit of an aha moment on the options and opportunities that we actually have to move on and move forward. That North Node is trying to get us on the right path. Mercury and Scorpio trying to piece together how it is that we've gotten here, where it is that we're currently at, the options that we actually have available to us, and to plan and strategize the best course of action on how to get out of where it is that we're at and closer to where it is that we desire to be. The moon is then going to get into the boxing ring, fight it out, square off with Neptune. Neptune, of course, is retrograde in Pisces energy, his rulership. And this particular interaction is definitely going to turn the volume up on the funk, on the nervousness, on our inability to focus, to concentrate, to come to a certain decision, to come to a certain choice point. Emotionally speaking, we're starting to feel overwhelmed, especially coming out of that Mercury and North Node aspect. Why? Well, because we just realized that we have an option to move on. We have an option to improve. We have an option to do better. But in realizing that, now we're feeling the weight of the responsibility on our shoulders. When you come to a particular pivot point where you are making great changes and transformations in your life, it requires a great amount of determination, of motivation, of responsibility, of accountability over your own damn self, over your own damn life. Many people are not prepared to boss up to that particular level in order to do what needs to be done. It is at this juncture, regardless of whether you're prepared to boss up or not, that we start questioning whether or not we actually have what it takes to do said change, said transformation, said move 
into our future selves. So we become overwhelmed, we start getting confused, we start creating anxiety and negative narratives where there doesn't need to be any, we really start kind of sitting in that negative Nancy funk. We sit in it for a couple of hours and then we have the moon in this Gemini energy trining beautiful interaction with the sun in the very late degrees of Libra energy. So the moon is coming to the end of the Gemini cycle. The sun is coming to the end of the Libra cycle. This is air on air action, giving us the trine. The trine is a growth point. It's a nudge in the right direction. Anytime that the sun and the moon are coming together, there's going to be an aha moment of what it is that emotionally and physically we want, we need, we desire. When we have a trine illuminating for us where it is that we have new wants, needs, and desires, it means that we're easily able to kind of make that transition if we are able to get out of our own damn way. 5.01 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, the moon is going void, of course. These are the times when things get shaky, things get unstable, things get uncertain, and we start kind of speaking fear into a lot of the good things that we just realized were actually working for us. While the moon is void, the moon is going to make a very harsh interaction with Pluto, because of course, Pluto is at the final degrees of Capricorn energy. Gemini energy, Capricorn energy, they don't have a whole lot in common. They don't see eye to eye. They're not on the same page at all. The moon in Gemini weighing the pros and cons of kind of staying where it is that we're at and continue to settle for what it is that we've already got versus do we do something different? Do we put ourselves out in uncharted waters, foreign territory, so to speak, in order to get a different result? Meanwhile, Pluto, the great transformer, is in this final degree of Capricorn energy, looking at our current circumstances, our present moment. We're not looking ahead. We're looking at what is still existing in our physical realms that are res kind of restricting and limiting us from actually moving on. Again, Pluto in this Capricorn energy, we're wrapping up a very long cycle, again, dating back to 2008. And we are at the final ending chapter of being able to have the power, the control to totally demolish, totally destroy, totally remove the debris of the old world that the old version of self had built, had created. So emotionally speaking, we take a dark turn. We're not feeling empowered. We're not feeling in control. And instead, we allow the negativity to get the better of us. We sit in that emotion. We sit in that mental plane. We sit in that perspective and narrative. 6.51 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, the moon shifts into her rulership in Cancer Energy. One minute later, Mercury, ruler of the mental plane, is going to make an awkward interaction with Neptune, who of course is retrograde in Pisces energy. This is water on water action. Water cleanses us, purifies us, refreshes us, renews us, especially emotionally and spiritually speaking. However, this is not the greatest interaction. What this is going to do for us is definitely put us in the element of delusion and confusion. We cannot concentrate. We can't focus very clear, and so it's very hard to be prepared to plan to strategize for the moves moving forward when, technically speaking, we are kind of fixated on the past. We're kind of fixated on what isn't working. We're fixated on where it is that we're being challenged, and we can't seem to wrap our head around it. So the confusion fog is definitely sitting in. It is going to blur the lines in our ability to even understand ourselves, let alone articulate our thoughts and our feelings and communicate that to the outside world. We are just not in a good mind space with this particular energy. And we sit in that for like four or five hours. And then the very last thing that takes place here today is the moon in her rulership in this cancer energy, making a positive interaction with Chiron, the wounded healer, who is retrograde in Aries energy, again, helping us to really figure out who it is that we are building the relationship with thyself, really identifying the wounds that are still alive and well within us, and what we can do to actually fix them, heal them, repair them. 
The moon interacting with Chiron, lucky for us, it's in a positive way, is us kind of realizing the parts of self that we like, the parts of self that are strong, the parts of self that we want to continue to build upon, to grow, to evolve, because those particular parts of self are empowered. They are helping us to kind of get in touch with ourselves, in touch with our wants, needs, and desires, especially emotionally speaking. And it's helping us to feel bossed up, in power, in control enough to actually see where there's been growth, where there's been healing, where there's been evolving in this new identity that of course we are furthering to anchor in and ground in, in our present moment.